Okay, in this video, I'm going to look at um, subroutines and functions, and this is particularly aimed at the IGCSE computer science uh, students that uh, a few of you have requested this video. Okay, so, so basically, what a subroutine function uh, function is is a block of code that is written uh, but is not executed sequentially. It is only executed when uh, it is called from the main program uh, routine or the main, the main program uh, or from within another subroutine or function, okay? So it, it, you have to, the, 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 the interpreter has to come across a function call or a subroutine call uh, that then moves to the function, executes the code that's contained within it. So if we look at this example, so if, if I've got a main program and where the green lines would be would be the, the code that is being executed in sequence. Okay, so in the order that the interpreter or the compiler finds it is how it will deal with those uh, program statements. So the main program is executing, executing until it reaches this uh, function call here, so it's a, 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 a subroutine call. And um, this is how it would appear in uh, pseudocode, if you were to represent this in pseudocode, where you have the call keyword and then the uh, name of the subroutine or the function that is being called. So what happens? When the program gets to this point, it passes control from here to the subroutine. And the subroutine then carries out all of the, the instructions probably in sequence, unless of course it reaches another sub uh, another function call, another sub call. Um, it will execute those in sequence until it reaches the end of the subroutine, which is indicated by these keyword end sub, and this is then passing, this will then pass uh, control back to the point in the main program where the subroutine or the function was called will then continue executing the code uh, in sequence until it reaches the end of the main program. So that's the basic idea of what a subroutine uh, does and, and, and how it works. So if we look at this, I've got another uh, uh, example, again, written in pseudocode. So at the top half, above the purple line, is uh, my subroutine. And I call my subroutine multiply and it will have a parameter passed to it called number. Okay, now parameters when they are passed to, this is a long word, uh, parameters when they are passed to a subroutine are pieces of data that are going to be used by the subroutine during its execution. Okay, so my subroutine consists of a for loop uh, whereby I've got to output the results of a multiplication. Um, it loops through that uh, five times, then we get to the end of the subroutine and we go back to the main program. So here I've got my main program, my program routine. So I'm asking the user to input a number, and then we have the function call with the number parameter specified. Now notice that the name doesn't necessarily coincide with the parameter that's been taken by the subroutine. Order matters more than the actual name. And uh, as you practice these and get used to them and rec start recognizing them, you would recognize that this uh, pattern holds true in uh, oh, I think pretty much all programming languages. Okay, so what's, what's happening here? Well, the, 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 when we uh, interpret, when we execute the program, this block of code is ignored to begin with. So we, the first line to be executed is input number. So we ask the user for a, a number to be input. Let's say the, the user inputs the number, let's keep it simple, two. Okay, so num is equal to two. And then we get to the function call. So the function call calls the multiply function. So it says, I want you to execute the multiply function or the multiply subroutine. And I want you to do it with the value that is in variable num. So two. So what is passed there, the, the parameter that's passed to this subroutine is the number two. And during the execution of the subroutine, 
where number appears within the subroutine, it will take that value that has been passed to it as the parameter. So whenever we see number in our subroutine, it will be two. So now we get to this for loop, okay? Now I is a type of cat, oh, it's a type of, it's a counter. Okay, so I will start at about one and go through till five. And then we execute in a line of code. So I is, starts as one. So we number, we output number times I. So two times one, we output two. We get to the next keyword, so we go back to the for loop. I now has the value two. So we multiply output two times two, and we output the result, and we get back around. I now takes the value three. Output two, five, three. Get to the next. I now takes the value four, and we output the result of that multiplication. Next, I takes the value five. We output the, the result of that multiplication. Now I has reached the, 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 the maximum value that it uh, needs to take. So we break out of this for loop and we get to the end subroutine uh, key, keywords. So we pass our uh, control of our program back to our main routine. And our main routine will then continue to wherever that takes us. Okay? And that is a, an example of uh, a, a subroutine working. This is in, um, in uh, pseudocode. Now we're going to take a look at a subroutine. This is written in Visual Basic, but the syntax is fairly standard. And I'm sure if you're pro used to programming in Python um, or another high level programming language, this syntax will be fairly similar and will make sense. Okay. So we've got our function here, which starts at the function declaration at this point. So I'm going to just hang on. So our function is this block of code here. So when our uh, program first runs through this, it will ignore this code. It will not execute it. We get to the main subroutine. We declare our radius variable, and we, we, we declare it as a decimal, uh, a type decimal, and we set it, we assign the value zero to it. We do the same with circ, whatever circle's going, circ is going to be, I wonder. And then we move on to the next part of our, our main routine. Okay, which we've got here. So we've got console write line. We're outputting something to the console. Insert the value of the radius. So we're asking the user for the, the, the value of the radius. And whatever the user inputs is going to be stored in the radius variable. Okay, so again, let's say the user enters the number five, presses enter. So now radius. The variable radius contains the value 5. And then we get to our next line, console write lines, we're outputting something, and here we've got the function call. Okay, we're saying call the function and pass to it the parameter radius. Okay, so this is the function. And this is saying, go find the function that's called circle, and pass to it the parameter that is stored within the variable radius, in this case, five. So our compiler or interpreter will get to the function call and see that we've got a circle taking the parameter r. Now r is going to take the value that was stored in the, it's stored in the variable radius. So r is going to be five, it's going to take the value five. Okay, because the function call said, call the function circle, passing to it the value that is stored in radius. Okay, and it's going to output that as a decimal. Okay. So, a real number. We, dis we declare the constant pi as 3.142. 
six steps. Pi is constant because pi doesn't change. Then we declare our variable c as a decimal. C we're going to use as our result. We're going to store as a result in c. Okay, then we've got our calculation. c equals r times r times pi. Pi r squared gives us the area of that circle. So that result is then stored in c. And then we've got this return statement here. And we're returning to the function call whatever is in C. So the result of multiplying R times R times pi. And the result of pi R squared. Okay. So R has taken the value 5. Pi is 3.142. We multiply those together. We store it in C. We return C to wherever the function was called from, to the function call, which is back down here. So what will be output is the result of calculating the radius, of the, the, the area of the circle using the value that was stored in the radius, which was five, and it will output that to the console. And then we simply have this console read key statement to stop the program from exiting immediately. And that hopefully will give some uh, idea of how functions and uh, subroutines are used in high-level programming languages. Okay, I hope that's been useful.